right, coming up, we find out if marijuana's investment pastures are a greener on the other side of the border. Please stay with us. Well, President Trump is under some pressure by U.S. pop producers trying to raise capital in American markets or borrow from banks. The problem is they're prohibited from doing so because marijuana is an illegal product under federal law, and that's raised the specter of American enterprises invading Canada in search of capitalization. Let's glimpse the future of investment in the pot industry. Paul Rosen is CEO of Tidal Royalty, which provides financing to the industry. He joins us from Montreal. All right, Paul, what's the, st what's the situation out there? Are Americans sort of casting envious eyes on Canada as a capital-raising market? Yeah, I think they're going with the if you can't beat them, join them mentality <laughs> in that a lot of large U.S. multi-state operators in the cannabis industry are coming to Canada because of our vibrant capital markets. And specifically, we can list a U.S. cannabis company on the Canadian Securities Exchange, which is a recognized uh, exchange, and therefore, because of the tremendous commitment our investment banks have made towards helping capitalize the Canadian industry, we're really set up in Canada to provide, if you will, the financial boost that the global cannabis industry is requiring. And the Americans have figured it out. They're beating a path quickly and uh, frequently to our door in order to list their companies on our market and tap our investment banks to raise the necessary growth capital. Does that help or hurt our uh, Canadian Made in Canada producing producers? I think it absolutely helps our entire industry because it reinforces the trend line that Canada is not just a big domestic economy for global for cannabis, but it really is becoming the hub of the global capital industry. So it advantages all of our assets in Canada that it is becoming the global hub for raising capital. So I see it as largely bullish for the entire Canadian industry. Does the, does the flow go south at all? Are Canadian companies able to go south in search of investor, investors? Definitely there are um, U.S. institutions, uh, family offices, high net worth individuals that have done that are located in the United States that have invested frequently and aggressively in U.S. cannabis stocks. So, quite right, there is some reciprocity. American companies are coming to Canada to tap our capital markets. Canadian companies have often raised some of their capital in the United States. So we see this again as a continental global phenomenon, but improbably, uh, but to our advantage, Canada is leading the way. I tell you, Paul, that slingshot of these Canadian cannabis companies into like the top 100 most capitalized companies in Canada, that's been pretty jaw-dropping. Uh, is this going to happen in the States as well? I, I most certainly, and my colleagues at Title will support this, we most certainly think that pretty much everything that we've seen develop in Canada is likely to replay in the American market, except, of course, scaled up for the size of the U.S. industry. So you mentioned in your opening comments there is a dichotomy between federal and state law, and as long as that dichotomy exists, there's going to be an overhang on the development of the industry when that dichotomy is eventually reconciled, which I believe is inevitable, if not imminent. I think there's going to be a ferocious bull market on U.S. Canada stocks and you're going to see largely the same phenomena that's played out in Canada over the last six years playing out in the American market. Hmm. You've sort of answered my next question. I was wonder if these current stock valuations on like the auroras and canopy growths of the world, if it's built on behavior that almost resembles excessive consumption of the company product or if it's actually <laughs> built on fundamentals that could go even higher. I believe in, you know, largely in efficient capital markets. Both the companies you mentioned uh, are publicly traded. They've been reporting their earnings and their revenue for several quarters in a row, really years. Mm -hmm. And I think the market's pretty intelligent at assigning valuations to companies. No market is perfectly efficient, but I don't fear that we're in some sort of bubble that's going to collapse. I definitely think that as more and more companies come into the fray and investors are facing more and more options for their investment capital, we're going to start relying upon traditional fundamentals in which to value these companies, meaning forward projections on their revenue and earnings and the multiple that the industry would apply to those earnings. So I, I don't think that you know, necessarily the, the, the industry is overvalued, but I do think that we're going to start to get to a winner versus loser mentality very soon. Interesting. Well, I'd appreciate, I wish I'd picked a few of these winners about six months ago on bot stock, <laughs> but I didn't. All right, Paul, um, mm. thanks for your explanation. I think you made a complicated situation sound pretty clear. We appreciate you joining us. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me today.